I've been asked to say the full album title, uh, and it's it's very long. And some people find that provoking or ridiculous or pretentious, but it's actually just a bunch of words, you know. It's it, they don't harm anyone, and it's uh, no more stories are told today. I'm sorry they washed away. No more stories. The world is gray. I'm tired. Let's wash away. Can you say it backwards now? Too? I cannot say it backwards. Okay. <laughs> I, if you had given me some time to rehearse, I, yeah, I could you have. Could. My three favorite albums of this decade. It's tough to to choose. Obviously, um, this decade is a long time. What are we now? Two thousand nine. So it's be like ninety nine. Oh, um, there is a uh, recording of a of a Steve Reich piece that I really like, which I think is from two thousand and four. Uh, Eighteen musicians, and uh, I think that's one of them. Uh, what else? Um, I really like an album by uh, an artist called Symptoms, and the album's called Calm, and that came out in 2006, I think. And it's very good. Um, what else? Um, oh, I don't know. Okay, three albums from this decade that I definitely listen to. I can't say for sure if they're my favorites, but because my I have a hazy mind, like a sieve. Um, but I would say the uh, Steve Reich recording of 18 Musicians that came out in 2004, I think it was, and Symptoms with the album Calm, and maybe uh, Animal Collective, uh, the album Feels, I'll probably put, put on. That's one of my favorites from this last decade. Ten years is a long time. We've always been uh, really interested in, in the visual aspects of uh, music as well. Um, we kind of, when we went to school together, we started out doing weird little films and things like that. And then we made music for those films. And that's kind of how we got into to doing that. And then we got really inspired by the alternative rock wave that kind of came to Denmark in a big way after Nirvana and you know that made us discover bands like Pixies and My Bloody Valentine and you know it's it's uh, it was like growing out of that becoming a band but we always kept that visual aspect of it and and uh, it's very important to us and and we talk about music in very visual terms um, it's kind of a you know it's it's similar to when when you read a book you you need to read the book before you see the film because the book is the book allows you to make up your own mind about the pictures and what people look like and stuff and I think the same is if you go to see our show there's a lot of visuals uh, and maybe they're different from your own visuals so I think it's good when people hear them they know the music already because then they can retain their own vision of the music as well as see what we come up with you know so it's yeah, it should probably be that way. I can't think of many films that I've seen that I liked better than the book. I think probably what come, comes closest is uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, film Lolita, which was a book by uh, Vladimir Nabokov. And I love the book. It's very, uh, it's very intense and... Uh, I think the film is great. Uh, they 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 were put certain limitations on what they could do, but I still think the the film is great just because of James Mason and Peter Sellers. They're so amazing. Um, so I think that's probably what comes closest to what I've seen as a good film filmatization of a book. Maybe one of the blue meanies in a Yellow Submarine. I could think I could be a good blue meanie. You know with a rainbow-colored tongue.